So basically, no matter if it's a one column layout, a two column layout, a three column layout, there are some properties that are going to be the same. For example, the background is going to be the same opacity. They're both going to, you know, only display whenever you hover over them. They're going to all have the same padding. Whatever properties are similar in all layouts, this is what where we want to set out. Of course, the main thing that is different about them is the width of them. This one column layout is a lot skinnier than the two column layout, so on and so forth. But for now, what is going to be a common attribute of all drop up menus? The first thing is, and this is pretty much all housekeeping stuff. Padding bottom 15 pixels. If you don't have a padding bottom, it looks really weird. Display none and text align left. So basically what we did is we added some spacing so the text doesn't look weird whenever it's in there. The position absolute is necessary just like whenever we did the programs menu because if we didn't have this then it would appear in a very weird position. Whenever we have position absolute it makes it positioned relative to the list item. So relative, you see how each of these drop up menus appears exactly where you think it would well that's because it's saying okay where do you want me positioned on the website well actually whenever we put absolute it uses this button as a reference and that way whenever we move over eventually it's going to be basically exactly where we want it so again position absolute means use the button as a reference for the drop up now like I said these are going to be common for every single drop up menu however the things that are going to be different are the layout sizes so for layout the one column layout and this would be an example of that where you only have one column we want to go ahead and give this a set width so go ahead and set the width of this equal to 140 pixels now we want to do this for width of each now we want to do this for each layout one column layout two column and three column two and three now for the two column layout we want this 400 or excuse me 280 and for the three column layout we want this of course none other than 420 for sure for sure by the way, yesterday was 420, so if you celebrated, um, congratulations. Now, basically what we did here is we set these layouts apart. And we pretty much want to make each one bigger because then we can stick more columns in it, of course. Now, basically what we did is we added 140 pixels to each layout. So, each column is going to be 100, well, it's not going to be 140 exactly, but it's because you're going to have some space on the left hand side but it's basically going to be 140 pixels so in the three column layout you can stick either one three width column in or three individual single columns make sense now after this what we want to do is if you guys haven't noticed yet we didn't set any property so that these appear whenever you hover over the buttons so right now even though they have a width and also all these properties so the text looks like cinema it's not displaying by default nothing is going to display we only want these to display whenever you hover over the buttons so how do we change this well actually uh, okay I was right display on hover or display drop up menus on hover uh, I guess I might as well type this out. Uh, I don't want to cheat on this one. So in the footer menu, remember the list item hover, and remember the list item is just the account, profile, and two columns button. Whenever you hover over those, and whenever you have a class called either one column layout, and now we can go ahead and copy. So whenever you hover over a button that has the one column layout, the two column layout or the three column layout that's when you display it 
So the first thing we want to do is set the display because by default it's none and we want it to display so go ahead and just change this to block and that'll make sure that it appears on the screen. Now the next thing that you want to do is it's going to be position absolute but what we want to do is just in case and you guys overwrite it whenever you're messing with it I'm gonna go ahead and um, copy some of these properties so margin remember we not only want them to reference the button in terms of where we're telling it to appear on the web page but you also want to move it to the left 15 pixels and that's because with our padding and our border it would appear the corner of it would appear like right around here if we didn't move it to the left 15 pixels so 0 0 0 negative 15 pixels moves it exactly aligned with the left hand side of the button pretty freaking cool now the bottom of course just like before we have to move it up 40 pixels if not it would appear on the very bottom of the browser which we do not want now the border radius I'm actually going to copy these two because I'm too lazy to type them alright so the border radius and the background that's what I'm looking for so just like the programs menu we're going to give a background at 50 percent 50 percent what the heck 50 percent opacity as well as make the top two corners curvy so what that does is it I don't know if you guys can see it right there not only does it make your background transparent which is awesome just like this one but it also make those top corners the top left and the top right curvy while leaving the bottom right and the bottom left ones square I think that looks cool if you guys think otherwise then this is how you change that right there so now what we did is we basically made three different layouts we added one column layout, a two column, and a three column layout. Basically, we made different width drop up menus. But now, what we need to do is, and guys, this is going to take like two set, actually, it's probably going to take like a minute and a half, literally. What we need to do is we need to style the individual columns because, as you guys can see, a standard column is 130 pixels. This is 130 pixels. This is 130 pixels. This is 130 pixels. However, we also need to style a column that takes up two like this one and this is actually 270 pixels so you can either use it with a single column or a double column and that equals three or you can style one big column and um, this would be 410 and you can see this takes up one this takes up two one that would take up three pretty obvious what that would look like but anyways thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to check out my new website, Bucky'sRoom.com. It's pretty sweet. Link below. And I'll see you guys in the next video where we are going to be finishing the CSS file.